on, uh, uh, have a lot of you been to my previous show on this show. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of newcomers, any newcomers? Uh, I must warn you, this is a repeat presentation on my show prior, but you're still more than welcome if you'll be with me, okay? Uh, so, for you new folks especially, and everyone, let me kind of introduce myself. My name is Don Williams, and I go by the nickname of Ducky, basically because of Donald Duck. Donald is my favorite character, and even though I draw all of the Disney characters, I'm kind of uh, noted to a Walt Disney World for my Donald Duck drawings. Donald has always been very near and dear to me, as all, all the characters are. Um, I work for Walt Disney World. I'm in my 32nd year, and I provide all the characters for the advertising marketing division of Walt Disney World. That means anytime you're at Walt Disney World, I know we have some probably California people here, but if you've ever been to Walt Disney World, sometimes my stuff is picked up and used at Disneyland as well. Uh, but any of the advertisement, mailers, brochures, pamphlets, uh, anything you get in the mail for Walt Disney World, all the advertising, the signage around the Orlando area, whether it be billboards or on the buses, any type of advertising art whatsoever that involves characters, I'm pretty much the guy that provides those characters, okay? Now in addition to doing all their advertising art, also, any area of Walt Disney World can come to me for artwork, whether it be the theme parks, and a lot for the theme parks, the resort hotels, contemporary Polynesian, Grand Floyd, all resort hotels. I do a lot of work for Disney Vacation Club. So any DVC members who get stuff in the mail, with Mickey on it, or Pluto on it, whatever, I'm the guy that does all those characters for DVC. Uh, and cruise lines, specifically. Now, in the last probably three or four years, probably about 80% of my work has been done for cruise lines, uh, whether it be for their advertising, from the booklets that you get in the mail that you order your cruises out of, to I do a lot of the specialty lithographs that you see up here. Just as the lithograph that you received, any specialty cruise receives a lithograph. The holiday cruise, the New Year's cruise, any new itineraries, Panama Canal, Hawaii, Alaska, uh, Transatlantic, uh, be doing lithos for for Greece and for Venice and for you name it and I'll be doing it. I've got a list of my lithos to do when I get back. And a lot of these up here are lithos that uh, have been done in, uh, in the past for uh, past cruises. The holiday cruise, that was the first transatlantic, the ones with the villains where they premiered, premiered the villain show. So I try to incorporate uh, new things that are going on. A lot of holiday ones, the first Panama Canal, uh, which was this one here with Ariel with the ship going from the Disney World Castle to the Disneyland Castle. Uh, and if you notice, if you notice the way I positioned Ariel, okay, uh, I used to hate to paint the castle. The castle was a nightmare to paint. You got all that filigree and all those turrets and all that kind of stuff. I do it, but it's a nightmare to paint. This particular lit, though, I had to do our castle, Disneyland Castle, and the cruise ship. Okay? The, the castle has always been a nightmare to paint until Spaceship Earth came along. And that's a killer to paint. All the little triangles and diamonds and everything else. And once you're painting it, you're, every one of those little triangles is a different shade. And you have to track them from the middle going outwards. And if you get interrupted, if you, lose, you, can, you can lose your, your place very, very easily. Then came the studio. That was easy. That's just a, a tower with mouse ears on it. That was an easy uh, icon to paint. And the tree of life, too. That's really just a big tree. You kind of fake all those little carvings in. <laughs> but the ship, the ship, with all those port holes and all those light bulbs and all those little balconies, any opportunity I get, like I did with this one, I took Ariel's hair and I cut it off and I as long as you can see that smoke pack, you're covered, okay? But anyway, I do a lot of work for Cruise Line. Also, I do a lot of work, uh, a lot of art, which I call throwaway art, okay? It's important art, not that it's not important, it is very important art, but it's throwaway art. Uh, stuff like this, the brochure for Animal Kingdom. Uh, I got a few of them around here somewhere. This was for resort packages, the little Dumbo. Uh, I, do, I do all the times and information brochures. You know, when you go into the park, and you get the little pamphlet, you open it up and see the Magic Kingdom's up until midnight. Okay, we're good to go, and then you throw it away, okay? A lot of throwaway art like that. 
important are but this throwaway art, okay? That's why the lithos are very, very special because that's what I call real art. We get to do a real painting uh, with real stuff. The cruise line is very, very good. Uh, they give me no direction whatsoever, which is great. So it's totally up to me. They just say, we need a litho for the Panama Canal. Okay, so it's totally up to me uh, uh, what I have to do. And I'm going to be doing another one for the upcoming Panama Canal. But I've done the Panama Canal now, what, five, six times? And there's just so many ways you can show that ship going through that canal. Okay? Uh, the last one was the, the, the rescuers there with a little leaf ball going through the canal before showing the way to the ship. But uh, I'll be doing that again. Um, I'll be doing one for Greece. I'll be doing one for, for, for Italy. Of course, the holiday ones are coming up. And now that we have four ships, I work towards sort of double because I could always do one ship because the wonder and magic sort of look the same. Except for, you know, on the outside specifically, if you show the side view of it, it could be either ship, as long as you don't show the front or the back. So I would always show the side of it, and we would use that same litho for, like, the holidays for both ships. But now the dream and the fantasy are so different looking, I can't get away with that anymore, so my workload is double. So I have to do a holiday litho for the Wonder Magic, holiday litho for the fantasy dream. New Year's litho for the Wonder Magic, New Year's litho for the Wonder I mean, fantasy uh, drink. Same with the concierge with those. I do a different concierge with those every year. Uh, guests staying in the concierge suites, they get a special lithograph. And again, I used to be able to do one for both ships. Now I have to do two because the fantasy, you know, you don't have snow heroes on the fantasy or the drink. And on the wonder of magic, so I could do the one, and then we use it on both ships, okay? So these are very fun projects, but they're challenging too, coming up with fresh ideas because I've done a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of lithos over the years. Specifically the holiday, the Christmas cruises, because they're very restrictive. It's a holiday cruise. You can't call it a Christmas cruise. Therefore I can't I can't show the Christmas tree. I can't show a Santa hat. I can't show this. I can't show that. But still it's got a little festive, so that's very, very challenging as well. Okay, so these are very, very fun projects. And people ask me over the years, out of all of my projects that I've done, the one that's most near and dear to me is Tony's Town Square Cafe. Uh, we probably have some California people here maybe have not been to Walt Disney World, but if you haven't been or if you've never been to Tony's, as you enter the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World, you're walking in the park, castle's over there, city hall's over there, over on this side is the Lady in the Tramp restaurant. Uh, it's Tony's Town Square Cafe. If you've never been in it, next time you go to Walt Disney World, you don't have to eat there. Just tell me you want to go in and look around. They'll be more than happy to let you do that. And I pretty much put that entire restaurant together. I did all the paintings in the restaurant. All of the large paintings in that restaurant are original paintings. They are not reproductions, they're not prints, they're not proofs. The actual painting paintings are in that restaurant. And when that uh, restaurant first uh, changed over to Tony's, the Imagineers asked me to, to do that restaurant, basically, and I did the signage, I did the china, I did the menus, I did all the artwork in the restaurant. And so that was a very, very special project to me because, true, uh, throwaway art is important, but it gets thrown away. Where this is actually a part of the Magic Kingdom. This is something that millions of guests go through year after year and experience. So you feel like you've actually kind of created part of that magic, okay? Also the main entrance of Walt Disney World. That big archway with the big Mickey and the big Donald. Those are mine too. I did those years ago and Imagineers picked them up and used them for the entry uh, into the park. So those are some of the things. All the buses and billboards in the area pretty much where you can see my, my artwork. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue drawing up here while I speak so we'll have more to give away. Everybody got a raffle ticket, right? If anybody did not, make sure you get one. Uh, make it known to one of the crew out here. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to, at the end of my presentation, we're going to raffle off all these scribbles that I'm doing up here, okay? So you might be able to walk home with one of those. Okay, uh, that's pretty much what I do. Uh, that's where you can see my work. Some of my work is picked up for, uh, for Disneyland, as I said. A lot of the advertisement on all the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party stuff. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, I do for both parts. And once in a while, now we've gone global, I'll, uh, I'll do stuff for uh, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Disneyland Paris, okay? They, I mean, my workload is so crazy. The number one more, man, out of the art department, 
I remember last year, believe it or not, it was Hong Kong's fifth anniversary already. Couldn't believe it's five years already since Hong Kong opened. But they came to me. Now, Disney, Hong Kong Disneyland has their own art department. It does all their stuff out there. But they came to me and wanted me to do their fifth anniversary lithograph. And I'm like, I have a lot of work. I mean, what's wrong with the people out in the Hong Kong that can do all the <laughs> stuff? I mean, what do they need? I mean, they, well, they, 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 they know your artwork and they, they, they want your style. I said, they know me in Hong Kong? They don't even know me in Disneyland. I, they know me in Hong Kong? <laughs> Anyways, I want them to do a, a, a project for them. So I get, I get projects fed from every which way but loose. And, but it's fun. That's what I do. That's what I always wanted to do. It's what I do. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. I go to work every day. I go out and paint Mickey Mouse and they pay me. I mean, you know? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to continue drawing up here. And for you folks that have heard this before, please bear with me, okay? But everybody asks, and it says in the newspaper, uh, on, the, on your navigator, on the front page there, it says, it tells you how I, I'm going to tell my story, how I got started at Walt Disney World. So I'm going to tell that story again. So those that, of you that have heard it, I'll try to keep it as interesting for you as possible, okay? Okay. And you new people, this is how I started at Walt Disney World. I wrote my first letter to Walt Disney World when I was 10 years old. I wrote to Walt Disney, actually, asking if I could be an animator. And I actually got a letter back from Walt Disney back then, from Walt Disney himself. And I still have it. It's probably my prized possession and my Disney collection. And yes, not only am I a Disney artist, but I am a Disney collector. My house looks like the aquarium, right? <laughs> One of my latest things is collecting the big figs. The big figurines that they, now they've gotten smaller again for, for a while. They were selling these nice, real big figurines. I don't buy them all. I mean, but I'm very fussy. The faces have to be right and all that kind of stuff. But I was collecting the, the, big, the big figurines, you know, the Mickeys and the Cinderella's and stuff like that. Right now I have 47 of them in my living room. Okay? But it's tasteful. Okay? It's tasteful. Anyway, uh, I got a letter back from Walt uh, saying that they didn't have any opening for a 10-year-old artist. But he was very encouraging, told me to keep on drawing and so on and so forth, which I did. You know, once I didn't know Walt's address, but I knew the studio was in Burbank. Yeah, I'm a 10-year-old kid, you know. And I wrote this letter and I just put it to Walt Disney, Walt Disney Studios, Burbank, California. And I knew that there. And it got to him. But once he wrote me back on the letterhead, I actually had the actual address. Okay? That was the worst thing they could have ever done. Because then I'm sending him Walt birthday cards and Valentine's and Christmas cards. I was a dumb little kid. But anyways, uh, I came from a very, very large family. There was eight of us kids. And it was just my mother and grandmother raising us eight kids. My father kind of left us, so we were kind of dirt poor. So the question of college or art school was kind of out of the question for me. I mean, my high school teachers really wanted me to go to art school, but I really wasn't in the uh, wasn't in the cards for me. But back then, we're talking the late 50s, mid 60s. Everybody didn't go to college back then. You know, most people, when they got out of high school, you graduated high school, you went out to the workforce, okay? Unless you were, like, really smart or fairly rich, you didn't really go to college. And I wasn't really, really smart or really, really rich, so, I, you know, college really wasn't in the cards for me. And as it was, when I graduated, Vietnam was at its height, and the Army was after me, the draft was after me. So I decided I didn't want to go in the Army, so I joined the Navy. And I spent four years in the Navy. And get this, they sent me to Alaska, Adak, Alaska, which is in the Aleutian Islands. You know, all those little dots, it's like the next to the last dot. <laughs> and uh, I spent three of my four years up in Alaska. I was in the Navy four years, and I never saw a ship. <laughs> Look at me now, this is my 73rd cruise, right? Okay, anyways, um, I spent four years in the Navy, got out of the Navy, went back to Massachusetts, where I'm from, and I needed to get a job. So I just went downtown, started putting my application in, 
all kinds of department stores and insurance companies and banks and whatever I could find. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, I got hired by a bank. And they put me in one of their branch offices as a teller. And I did that just for a few weeks. And they, then they were training me to be assistant manager. And the next thing you know, I'm a manager. I'm a manager of a branch office. Because I, I catch on to things pretty quickly. So I was a bank manager. And they gave me my own branch. And I actually was a manager of a bank for just about 10 years. The whole time I'm this bank manager, of course, I'm still very enthralled. and very hooked on Disney all these all these years. That never left me. And of course everybody I worked with, they all knew they all know I was Disney. Just like you guys. Any of you guys into Disney, everybody around you, they all know you're in the Disney, okay? <laughs> so um, I'm still doing the collecting and I'm, I'm working at the bank, but in my free time I'm drawing, I'm painting, you know, Disney stuff. I'm going to Disneyland on vacation one year, Disney World the next, back and forth, Disneyland, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney World. I used to take my mother and she can't we go somewhere other than Disney? <laughs> all I'd have to do is entice her with Las Vegas. We'd go to Disneyland, stop at Vegas, and so she was cool with that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I did that and uh, but I'm still drawing and painting the Disney characters, but you know, just for my own amusement, my own pleasure. And what would happen was, I had quite a nice, uh, quite a collection of pretty nice pieces that I did. And what I used to do every Christmas time, I take maybe a dozen of my Disney paintings, uh, nice scenes, you know, Cinderella and the coach and Pinocchio and Jiminy and stuff, and them all matted and framed. And every Christmas time, I take like maybe a dozen of them and I bring them into the bank, my branch office. I could do pretty much what I wanted in my own bank. And I would hang them around the bank along with our Christmas decorations. And they look, they look really nice. You know, Disney and Christmas, they go together, sort of. Got a lot of nice comments from a lot of my customers. And I used to do that each Christmas. Well, one Christmas time, the uh, the anchor man from the local six o'clock news, regular customer of mine, knew him really well, used to come in the bank all the time. What I didn't know about him was he was a huge Disney collector. And he came into the bank one Christmas time and he saw all this Disney stuff hanging around. And he said, where did you get all this Disney stuff from? It's worth a fortune. I said, no it's not, it's not worth anything. It's just stuff that I did. But anyways, what he wanted to do is he wanted to do a little feature on the 6 o'clock news, you know, local banker paints Disney kind of thing. Uh, yeah, okay, so a few nights later he came over to my house with his film crew and they filmed me drawing a little bit and painting a little bit and they filmed a lot of my artwork uh, and they ran it about like a two minute special, which was a long time on the 6 o'clock news. And it was very well received, so I guess they ran it a couple of nights. And once, once they ran that, then all my regular customers would come into the bank and they'd say, geez, we saw you on the news, what are you doing here? You should be working at Disney. <laughs> well, yeah, but how did you get from point A to point B, you know? So uh, what happened was, one of the policemen, it was a small town that my bank was in. So I, all my, I knew all my customers. We used to hire off-duty policemen to be security at the bank. On their days off, they would pick up extra money and work at the bank as a security guard. So I knew all the cops, okay? And uh, they all knew how I felt about Disney. My tellers all knew how, how I felt about Disney. As a matter of fact, if a new Disney film came out, remember specifically like when Pete Spragan came out? If my tellers would go see it and bring me their tickets to them and could tell me what it was about, I give them the day off the pay. And I, I, the main office didn't know that. I'd run their cash box for them. They, if, they, if they showed me proof that they went, I let them have the day off the pay and I run their cash box for them. So I mean, you know, I was a little Disney crazy. What do you think? No? <laughs> Anyways, I shouldn't be telling you guys. You guys are making a real screwball here. But anyway, um, what happened was, one of the policemen, Without my knowledge, he goes over to the TV station where they had the videotape of, you know, the show they aired of me, and he gets a copy of this videotape. 
And I remember him coming to me. He didn't tell me what he was doing, but he came to me and he said, just playing real dumb. He said, you know all about Disney. Well, who, who's in charge of Disney right now? And at the time, it was Ron Miller, his Walt's son-in-law, okay? Diane's Walt's daughter's husband. He was in charge of the company at that time. I said, well, it's Ron Miller. You know, he's Walt Disney's son-in-law. He's running the company. Oh, okay. So without my knowledge, he takes his videotape and he wraps it up with a letter. And you had to know this cop. It was your typical Irish policeman, gray hair, pot belly, Irish accent, everything. Really gruff, but the sweetest man you ever want to know, okay? But it's real, real, it came across real, real gruff. And he writes a letter saying to Ron Miller, you got to hire this guy because he loves Disney and he draws good and you'd be nuts if you didn't hire him. And he wraps it up with this videotape and he mailed it out to him. And then he tells me what he had done, okay? And I was a little bit upset because, you know, I really wasn't ready to make this step yet because, well, actually, I probably never would have been ready. I really owe a lot to this guy because uh, I never would have been ready. Because I used to have this little fantasy going on in my head that maybe someday Disney would kind of magically come to Massachusetts and kind of pluck me out of my my house in Massachusetts to bring me down to Disney World or Disney, Disneyland and make me a Disney artist. But I felt if I approached it, then the dream was gone if I failed. So I probably never would have made that step without step without being pushed into it just a little bit, you know? And he did. And so then he had told me what he had done. I was a little upset, but I was okay. So we waited to hear back from Disney. And I got a letter back about two weeks later from the head of their animation department, actually, saying that they viewed the tape and they were very interested, uh, I mean, very impressed with my artwork. However, they had no openings. But if I wanted to pursue this, I could contact a gentleman by the name of Ralph Kent in Orlando at Walt Disney World. Well, I figured, well, now I've got a name. Let's see what I can do with it. So I wrote my own letter this time a little more tactful than, than his letter. And I mailed it off with a videotape to this Ralph Kemp in Florida. And I waited to hear, on pins and needles, I waited. The whole, the whole scenario in California took me about two weeks from the time it was mailed to the time I heard from them. So I, I assumed that about two, three weeks I could hear from Florida, but two weeks went by, I didn't hear anything. A month went by, I didn't hear anything. Two months went by, three months went by. I'm going crazy up in Massachusetts. So I figure I pick up the phone and I start dialing information for Florida, for Walt Disney World, and I get this number and that number, and before you know it, I get a number for, for Ralph Kent. So I call it, I get a hold of his secretary, and I said to her, uh, yeah, you know, this is, uh, I'm Don Williams, and I've mailed Mr. Kent a videotape several months ago, and I just wondered if he received it okay. Oh yeah, he received it, it's sitting here on his desk, he hasn't looked at it yet. And I said, well, you know, I have an opportunity to come to Florida. I wondered as long as I'm coming to Florida, if I could maybe meet with Mr. Kent. Well, when are you coming? Well, when can I see him? <laughs> so she made me an appointment, had absolutely no intention of going to Florida, I kind of threw that out. So now she made me an appointment. So I had to take time off of work, get a flight, get a hotel, all this kind of stuff, pack up a bunch of artwork, and I packed up about 55, 60 finished pieces of artwork, full scenes. I had them all matted and shrink wrapped. They weren't in frames or anything, but they, it was a nice presentation. They were all matted and I shrink wrapped, and they were really, really, really nice presentation. <coughs> so now I'm flying down to Walt Disney World. And this is it. This is the whole ball of wax. Either we're going to make it or it's over, you know. So, um, and it was kind of, it was kind of double-edged, uh, double-edged sword because it was exciting on one on one side, and the other side it was uh, nerve-wracking because you know this was it. This is my whole dream right here. Ralph didn't like me. Didn't like my work. It's done. Okay. But on the other hand, the art department at that time was in the underground tunnel underneath the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. Everybody know there's a tunnel under Walt Disney World? There's a whole city under there, a whole tunnel system? Well, 
Well, if you didn't know it, there's a tunnel under Walt Disney. <laughs> And I knew about that, and this was really cool, because I was going to get me down in the tunnel, because I had to go down in the art department, okay? They would get me special pass and bring me down there, and get to go in the tunnel, and all this kind of stuff. They even took me to the uh, to the uh, employee cafeteria down there, and I could see all the workers down there. It was really, really very exciting, okay? Uh, but anyway, then I met with Ralph, and at that time, the art department was a very large, much larger art department than we have now. They had about 16 artists working in the art department. Uh, they were very specialized, were kind of cut right in half. Eight of the artists did characters, and just characters. That's all they did. They never didn't do castles or, or anything like that. The other half did the realistic stuff. They did the portraits of the wall, did the paintings of the castle, and the fashions for, for Lake Buena Vista, stuff like that, newspaper ads. So it was very, very specialized. So what Ralph did, I'll never forget it, when I met with him, he brought me into a big, huge conference room, big empty conference room, conference table, and he brought in his top two character artists to kind of view my work as well, okay? Because they were the top character guys, and he felt they could give all a good, you know, their opinion would be worth a lot. So we went in this conference room, and they had all my artwork spread out all over this huge table, and each one of them, they got my artwork, and they're examining it at like, like with a fine tooth comb. Here. Stone face. None of them saying a word. I couldn't. I didn't tell whether they liked it, whether they hated it. They gave me no clue. So this went on for about 20 minutes. All three of them scoping out my artwork. And finally, the two artists left. And Ralph said to me that he wanted to see me again the next day. It was a good sign. And he, you know, he didn't throw me out, he didn't say he didn't like me, he didn't like my artwork. He, he wants to see me again, that's, you know, that, that's a pretty good sign. I went back the next day, and uh, what he told me was that my character art was very good, but I needed a little bit of polish. So what he wanted me to do he was going to give me model sheets of all the characters. Now, for those of you that don't know what model sheets are, there are what we call instruction sheets, model sheets, on every single character in existence, all the way back to Steamboat Willie, all the way up to Lilo and Stitch and Tango and so on and so forth. Every single character in existence, their sheets, their, their model sheets are basically how to draw sheets. They show you how the character is constructed, Show you, they show you front view, back view, side view, different expressions, and so on and so forth. All these are taken off of model sheets. See the construction of Mickey there, the head, so on and so forth. There's uh, all the all the sketches in Animator's palette. Those are actually all taken right off of Disney official model sheets. Okay, and there's these sheets on every single character in existence. The existence, not only the major characters but also your incidental characters, all the little Cinderella birds and Snow White forest and every character in existence. And they're given out to all the artists, so all the characters, uh, all the artists will draw the characters the very same way, okay? And they're very, very protected. Uh, they're all signed off by the original animators and so on and so forth. Matter of fact, I've seen like Xerox of these model sheets on eBay for like, $50, $100, I don't know where they got them from, but they're out there. Uh, so they were very, very protected at that time. So what Ralph was going to do, he was going to give me actual official model sheets of all, the uh, uh, of all the characters. And I could use those and use the proper reference to draw from. And he was going to assign me one of his artists, Russell Schroeder, who was their top artist at, at the time. He was the man, okay? And I was going to be able to go home and practice from these model sheets, submit submit my drawings to Russell, and Russell would kind of mark them up and critique them, show me, show me what I'm doing right and show me what I'm doing wrong and so on and so forth. And we'd have this kind of back and, and forth kind of instructional thing through the mail. No promise of a job, but hey, I'm working with a real Disney artist, I've got real Disney model sheets, I'm a happy camper, okay? So I go back home to Massachusetts, and I'm all done, ho 
I got these model sheets. I go to work at the bank in the daytime. I come home at night. I have my dinner and I start drawing around seven o'clock. And I draw about two, three in the morning. I'm a late, like, uh, late night person anyway, so I do that now even. I don't go to bed like before two thirty any night. I'm either drawing or on my computer or something. I'm a night owl. But anyways, uh, do my best work at night. But uh, anyways. I get home, I go to work at the bank, I get home at night, I draw. That first week I did a hundred drawings, I was so done at all. And it was really, really an effort to do a hundred, but that's what I did. And I mailed them off to Russell. Second week, I started on another character. I did Mickey that first week, and did Donald the second week. Did them, mailed them off to Russell. Third week, did a hundred drawings, mailed them off to Russell. Now, 100 drawings a week was a tough pace to maintain, but I figured I can't cut back because if I cut back, they're going to think I'm losing interest. So I got to keep up this pace, and I did. And I drew 100 drawings a week, every single week, mailed them to Russell for almost two years. And finally, at the end of two years, you know, they're not going to hire me as long as I'm up here in Massachusetts. I need to be in Florida. This is crazy. So I walked into the bank. I was up for vice president, and I quit. They thought I was crazy, because I had no promise of a job in Florida. But I didn't care. At this point, I wanted a mouse on my paycheck. I didn't care if I was selling popcorn. So I quit the bank, and I packed up, and I moved to Florida, and I figured I'd get a job at the Magic Kingdom, and continue send up, send, you know, uh, sending my drawings, but from Florida, and I'd be right down there and figure they're going to hire anybody from out of state. So, move to Florida. But you, what you got to understand is, I moved in September. Now this is the late 70s. You got to understand, Walt Disney World isn't what it is today. Walt Disney World consisted of the Magic Kingdom, contemporary, and Polynesian. That was it. There's no Epcot, no Animal Kingdom, no studios, no water parks, no Grand Floridian, None of that stuff. No Animal Kingdom, none of that. Magic Kingdom, Contemporary, Polynesian, okay? And at the Gulf Resort, but nobody paid attention to the Gulf Resort. Anyway, <laughs> and, uh, and then they have a small version of Downtown Disney, which was called Lake Buena Vista, with basically just the marketplace. It was really quite quaint, quite nice. It was very, it was very darling. It was a really nice little shopping area down there. I remember going into, if you go into downtown Disney now, that traffic light there by Crossroads, it's crazy. Back then it was a two-lane dirt road with a stop sign to get into downtown Disney, to get into the marketplace. Um, but anyways, um, that's all that Walt Disney World uh, consisted of. And when I got down there, it was deaf, it's not like it is now, we're like busy all the time. Back then there was definite slow periods. When the season was over, it was over. You could go in October and have the park to yourself. I've done it before I worked there. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, right after summer is over, I went down in September. School had just started. And so when I got there, they weren't hiring because the season was over. Not only were they not hiring, they were actually cutting hours back, okay? And I remember I drove out to their casting office. Their casting office was, I don't know, do we have any cast members here? Yeah, you, it, uh, cast, the casting office was way out on Reeves Road. It was like going to the middle of the wilderness for like, seemed like for hours before you came to this trailer. And that was their casting office, okay? And I went out there and I met with this, uh, this interviewer, his name was Neil, I remember. I think it's okay to say it, because I don't think he's a company anymore. It's been 32 years ago. So. Anyways, I met with this Neil guy. He was their interviewer. And uh, I pretty much told him what was going on. I was sending artwork to the art department, stuff like that. I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't trying to get in the art department. You know, I just wanted a job in the Magic Kingdom, in the Contemporary, in the park, doing anything, any full-time job. Well, you know, it's the end of the season and we have nothing. Come back tomorrow. So I did. I came back tomorrow, and I went back to see him every single day for almost three months, and I could not get a job. And uh, this was ridiculous. Three months, I'm running out of money here, you know. Uh, I've never gone that long without a job in my life. So 
I figured, you know, this is crazy. I've got to, I've got to go to work somewhere. I'm, I'm low on money. I could have went to the Sun Trust, the Sun Bank at the time, because that was Disney was their main account. That was a huge bank down there. Still is a big bank. I could have got hired in the bank in a heartbeat, but I wasn't about to give up everything I had in Massachusetts and get stuck in another bank. Okay, I refused to do that. So I figured, well, if I can't get a job at Disney, maybe I can at least get a job on Disney property, okay? So they still have Hotel Plaza Boulevard. That's that road that goes into downtown Disney with all the hotels on it that are non-Disney hotels, but they're on Disney property, like the Hilton and the, uh, and there's the Best Western Holiday Inn now, the Royal Plaza, all those hotels. And I, uh, I drove down there and I started going into all those hotels and the very last one before you get to uh, the entrance of downtown Disney. Now I think it's a Weston or a Wyndham. It was a Sun Royal, it used to be the Grosvenor. Well back then, it was the Dutch Inn. And I got a job in the Flying Dutchman dining room, okay, as a seating host and cashier in the dining room. So uh, I had a job. And you gotta remember now, this whole time, I'm still doing my 100 drawings a week here, okay? And I'm still mailing them in, all right? But uh, I finally got a job, started doing that, and I only lasted two weeks. Never had a job for just two weeks in my life. And the reason I only lasted two weeks is because I quit. Wasn't anything wrong with a job, the only problem was they used, if you worked for Disney and you went into their dining room for lunch and you flashed your Disney ID at the register, they gave you 25% discount off your lunch. And uh, so I'm working the register and people are coming up one after the other with their, with their check from lunch and then one after the other they're flashing their ID in front of me to get their 25% discount and I'm thinking, what are these guys got that I ain't got that they got a Disney ID and I can't get one? It just drove me crazy. I lasted two weeks and I quit. And I went right from there, right back to that casting office way out in the middle of the boondocks and I saw this Neil guy and I said, Neil, you can you gotta tell me something. I've been coming here for three months and you can't tell me in three months time that you don't have one full time position open. Anything, I don't care what it is. And so he says, well, let me see what I can do. He goes back and he sees this manager somewhere and he comes out and he says, I got two full-time positions open. He says, one is graveyard custodial at Lake Buena Vista. I said, I'll take it. And he said, well, I should at least tell you about the other one. The other one is doing portraits of guests out in the park. I said, well, why can't I do that? Well, you know, you've got to have a special talent, and, you know, you've got to be somewhat artistic, and all this kind of thing, you know. And he knew I was sending artwork to the art department, and I said, well, well why can't I apply for that? He said, well, you've got, to have, you've got to have a special interview by the guy in charge of all those, the park artists, and he works down in the art department. It, this, he works in the art department that I'm trying to get into, okay? And, uh, but he's in charge of all the portrait art stuff in the, in, in the park. I said, well, can you, uh, can you set me up an interview to see him? Well, I don't know, that might take a couple of days. I said, fine, I'll get back to you. So I left him, I went out to the lobby, went to the pay phone, no cell phones back then, okay? And I called up Russell, and I said, Russell, do you know this guy that's in charge of the portrait artists? out in the park, you know, Russell's the guy that sent him my drawings to me. He said, yeah, what do you mean, Sam? Yeah, and Sam works in the office right next to me. I said, well, do you think you could ask him if he could maybe see me this afternoon or tomorrow? And Russell said, well, hold on a minute. And I hear him hold the phone away. He says, hey, Sam, can you see this guy tomorrow? And Sam said, yeah, okay, so I had my interview, okay? <laughs> so I went and I saw this guy, Sam. They got me special. Uh, pass to go down into the tunnel to the art department and I went and saw this guy Sam who's in charge of all the portrait artists and you gotta believe, you won't believe this gospel truth before Sam worked at Disney he was a bank manager in Connecticut for 10 years so we clicked okay needless to say he hired me okay 
So, uh, so I'm going to start the next day, and what, what happens is there's like a, a like a three-day training period, minimum of three-day training period, because the, the portraits that you do, it wasn't drawing people and making them cartoons like they do at downtown Disney now, where they draw you and they make you a cartoon. It wasn't that. Uh, they actually do realistic, all shaded, pastel portraits, profiles. I guess what's it sideways? And you do their pro profile, but very realistic, all shaded nice and everything. And there was a training period, because there's a trick to it. Uh, you, you'd have the guests sit in front of you, sideways, and what you do is you take a crayon and you follow the outline of their face, the, the forehead, the nose, the lips, the chin. You get that one line right, you got the whole likeness right there. The rest of it's all just curls, frosting on the cake. So we would go in Tomorrowland over the big fast food restaurant there. I, I still call it Tomorrowland Terrace. It's, uh, what's it called now? Cosmic Rays. There's an attic up there. We go up there, Sam and I went up there in an attic. We had a we had an easel set up and we'd pull up the servers from downstairs, the cast members one at a time, throw them in a chair and we'd practice on them, okay? So after I learned how to do that, we did that for three days. And then the next thing you know, they threw me out in the park drawing portraits of guests. And uh, did that for six weeks. But now, it was all about volume when you did the portraits. Because back then, Disney charged four dollars a portrait, okay? Didn't have to worry about guests. You always had guests. There was always somebody there wanting a picture done. But Disney would charge four dollars a portrait. Disney got three dollars, and the artist got a dollar. That's how you got paid. You got paid a dollar per portrait. So it was all about volume. The more portraits you did, the more you got paid. And if, once you got good, you could probably knock one off every 10, 15 minutes, okay? Uh, but that had to be good. You know, it had to be Disney quality, you know. But anyways, I did that for a period of six weeks. Then all of a sudden, one day, I go into work, and I got notified that they're going to close down the art festival and put in an orange juice bar. So I always tell people it took me six weeks to close the place down. <laughs> but anyways, they promised all the artists jobs, not necessarily an art job, but a job. So I wound up in the big gift shop in Tomorrowland, putting t-shirts on the shelf and punching the cash register again. And I was doing that, I did that for about six weeks and all of a sudden I got a memo left at my location that they wanted to see me at the end of my shift in the art department. And uh, I kind of owe this part for Russell because what had happened was I was dealing with Ralph Kent, who was a VP, and he was kind of hard, unapproachable at the time, because he had just made vice president. He was out in California at meetings and all this kind of stuff. It was hard to get hold of Ralph. And Russell, he was great, but he was just an artist like me. I can't hire anybody. He couldn't hire anybody. He couldn't hire me. But there was somebody in the whole scenario I didn't know about that had a manager of the art department. His name was Craig, okay? And what had happened was, he went to Russell one day, because Russell was her top guy, top artist, and told Russell he was thinking of increasing his character staff by a couple of a person or two, and he wanted Russell to be in on the interviews, because he was her top guy, he wanted him looking at the artwork, the portfolios, so on and so forth. And uh, uh, he wanted Russell involved in that, and Russell said, well, as long as you're interviewing people, we've got this guy that's working up in Tomorrowland, why don't you, he's been sending me artwork, why don't you take a look at him? And Craig said, fine, if you think so. And he said, let me see what he's been sending me. So Russell brought in literally boxes and boxes <laughs> of drawings that I've been sending to him over the last two years. If you do the math, 100 drawings a week by almost two years comes out to almost 10,000 drawings, okay? So uh, that's when I got a memo left at, the, at my location that they wanted to see me in the art department, okay? So uh, I went up to the art department and I met with this Craig guy. And the way it was put to me, they were gonna bring me in on a 30-day trial. And at the end of 30 days, if I did well, and they could squeeze an opening, they would hire me. And of course, if I did well, at the end of 30 days, if they couldn't swing an opening, 
at least they knew where to get me when an opening came up. And of course, if I didn't do well, well then I'm punching the cash register for the rest of my natural life. So me being the type of person I am, I'm worried what's going to happen at the end of 30 days. So I go in there that first week and they have me doing nothing but Mickey, every possible pose and expression of Mickey you can think of. And the next day, the next week I'm doing Donald. Every possible pose and situation of Donald you can think of. Third week I'm doing Goofy, and in the middle of the third week they gave me an actual project to work on. I figured this is a good sign. If they were going to get rid of me, they wouldn't give me a real project to work on. Yeah, it was just a real job here. Plus, it was very involved. It involved three paintings. There was no way on earth I could get this whole project done in the week and a half that I had left. They must have, they must have keep me, you know? That's what I'm thinking, anyways. So finally, I was working on that project uh, on the 30th day, and I go into work, and I'm waiting all day long for them to come up to me and tell me whether I get to stay, whether I got to leave, or what. And before you know it, it's 5.30, everybody's gone, nobody said anything to me one way or the other. I figured, well, I'll just keep going back until they tell me not to. And that was 32 years ago. <laughs> they have never came up to me in time for that to talk. I thought of it about 10 minutes ago and I totally forgot it. What was it I was going to tell you guys? Can't remember. Anyways, uh, that's how I can start at Walt Disney World. I got just a few minutes here and then we're going to start the raffle. Um, I always wanted, a lot of people confuse me with an animator. I'm not an animator, I'm an illustrator, okay? I've, not, I've done animation, I've always, like, say when I wrote to Walt, I wanted to be an animator. I've always wanted to be an animator until I actually did animation. I found animation to be boring, tedious. I mean, it was okay. I've done some, uh, the animation I've done is mostly for TV, mostly for advertising. I've done some, I've done some uh, Jiminy Cricket, I've done some Mickey, I did some Tinkerbell. I've even, I've even animated the monorail. Boring. But anyway. Uh, and you know, everybody knows how animation works. You know, every little movement is another drawing. So you're just drawing the same character over and over and over again, just making a move just a little bit at a time. And I quickly learned that I like to paint too much. I draw so I can get to the point where I can paint, okay? And animation, you don't get to do that unless you become a background artist. And if you get to become a background artist, that's great, but then you're just doing backgrounds. You don't get to work with the characters. And I kind of want to do both. I want to paint and I want to work with the characters. So I quickly got out of animation and joined illustration. So now I get to come up with a concept, I get to draw it, I get to paint it, and I do everything from, instead of working on Mickey or, or Jimmy Cricket day in, day out for a year or two years, <coughs> every day I get to work on a different character. I can draw Mickey today and Snow White tomorrow, and Cinderella the next day and Pinocchio the next day. So I get to work with all the characters and I get to do everything from Mickey on a three inch ticket to a 60 foot billboard. So it's much more challenging, much more rewarding, okay? <laughs>